rebuilding a model steam plant, part 42, working out the best place for the steam piping to fit. It is better to keep steam piping low down on the plant so that you do not burn your fingers. The steam outlet pipes from the condenser are very hot, but steam inlet pipes from the boiler are extremely hot. The higher the pressure, the hotter the steam. I want to briefly revisit this part. It's the outlet from the S50 steam engine to the condenser. As you can see, the pipe is not level. Luckily, I made this part of the system adjustable. In the previous episode, I showed this clip. It's a steam pipe from the engine to the condenser. This was just before I silver soldered the pipe and then realised that the union nuts were on the wrong way around. Or at least one of them was. This clip shows a piece of PM Research brass pipe in between the condenser and the outlet from the S50. As you can see, the parts are now in alignment and everything's level. I made an exhaust outlet pipe for the number 10 using PM Research parts, including yet another elbow. I was lucky when I screwed it in position, I just needed to use the spanner to put it in the correct position, pointing downwards. In this clip, it's nearly there. When piping a steam plant, you really have to sit and think about it. You can't always get it perfect, it depends on the positioning of the engines. This has to be taken into consideration. In this clip, I've bent a piece of 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter pipe between the outlet of the Stuart number 10 and the condenser's inlet. And here it is fitted in position after I silver soldered the union cones on the end of it and fitted the nuts the right way around, of course. Here I'm tightening the union nuts from the outlet of the S50 to the inlet of the condenser. You will notice now that the pipe looks a lot better. Everything's level. I'm rotating the S50's flywheel just to make sure that the mechanism is OK and the pipes aren't blocked. It's time now to test the installation of the Stuart at number 10 using compressed air. Notice how the flywheel wobbles. That's because the timing is absolutely on the mark, admitting the air slightly before top dead center. It runs very well indeed and it's powerful. While I think about it, it's a good idea to oil the engine at this stage. This was never meant to be a serious air test, and the air pipe blew off because I didn't fasten it in place. The steam inlet piping to the S50 is more complicated than the steam inlet piping from the number 10. Here I'm showing which valve is going to be connected to which engine. The number 10 to the centre tap and the S50 to the right hand tap. The first thing to do is to screw a double union into the cast elbow. And as always, once again, I'm using Loctite 542 for this. I really don't need to say what I'm doing at the moment, it's obvious. Once I coated the double union's thread with Loctite 542, I simply screwed it into the elbow. Not forgetting to tighten the union using my Barco spanner, although with Loctite 542 it would probably be steam tight if it was slack. At this stage I'm just levelling up the steam inlet assembly. And here it is, all ready to accept a steam pipe. I'm not showing all the silver soldering operations in these episodes because I've made so many videos where I'm showing silver soldering, it does get a bit monotonous and drives me nuts. If you're a beginner and want to know how to silver solder, please watch my video called How to Silver Solder for Beginners. The steam tap on the boiler uses a 5 16 by 32 thread per inch union nut. This is designed to take a union for 3 16 of an inch diameter copper pipe. I'm using a special adapter union to allow me to use 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter pipe. The pipe from the tap on the boiler goes to the turret. First of all, I loosely fit the parts together to make sure they fit, then I tighten the nuts and everything straightens up. The other end of this pipe fits to the turret, and this is a more difficult job. I'm using a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut, but there's not much space between the union nut and the columns that support the turret. I have a small spanner that I modify from time to time, and for this job I did have to further modify it. It was a bit of a fiddly job, but the special spanner did the trick, and now the union nut is tight onto the turret underneath. After piping the turret, I'm now going to pipe the Stuart No. 10V engine. Normally, I would have run this pipe a bit lower, nearer to the baseboard, but unfortunately, owing to the bases on these engines, 
It was too close, so ran it more or less at the same level as the exhaust pipe. It's okay because on both of these engines, the steam pipes are inboard, and to touch them, you have to reach into the centre of the plant, which you really wouldn't do in practice. After the silver soldering operation on all the pipes, I cleaned them first using Scotch Brite, followed by the polishing spindle, and finally using some Brasso. It's a waste of time making the piping too shiny, because as soon as the pipes get hot, they go dull again. But that, of course, is down to the individual. I suppose it's something to do on those cold winter nights, but you do have to be careful cleaning pipes in situ. And a good tip is not to use liquid metal polish, because that goes everywhere. Normally, I use the wadding type of Brasso. The pipe is secured at the turret end first, and now I'm moving to the engine. As almost always, I'm using my Barco spanner to tighten the union nut. Smaller, thinner spanners tend to mark union nuts, but the broad jaws of a Barco do not do that. The job is now well underway. All I need to do is pipe the S50 to the turret. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.